Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm a Mama TGB here on Flosstube but also on, on Instagram. I'm a rookie at this and this is my sixth take already today. <laughs> Welcome to the morning briefing. It is Sunday the 28th of March and this is going to be Flosstube number 23. So I'm now going to have to try and work out what I've said in all of the different takes and what I haven't said in this take. So it's been a super busy week at work. We had to get all of our um, assessment schedules to WJEC, which is the exam board um, by the end of this week, because obviously the students aren't sitting exams, but they are still sitting assessments and the exam board need to know how we plan on coming up with a grade for them. Don't get me started on that. Um, but we did that and we got it all, we got it all sorted. And that was in, so that was super, super busy. Last week was our last week before Easter as well, so we're technically on Easter holidays for now for two weeks. And it's a weird situation. I feel as tired as ever, as ever I would finish in for the Easter term. But I almost think I shouldn't feel as tired because I've spent most of it at home, but then teaching from home as well. So it's just that, that kind of lethargy from a really, really long term. Um, and thank you again to so many of you who commented about my um, my colleague and friend Alary. It was her funeral today, so um, obviously you're not allowed to go in big groups to to the crematorium, and uh, so all of the spaces there were quite rightly reserved for for family members. Um, so lots and lots of staff members and students lined the route um, that the hearse took up to the crematorium today. So. It was a really, really sad day. Everyone had daffodils, everyone was wearing bright colours, but it was still a really, really sad day to watch the, you know, to watch that hearse go past. And the kids were so upset. I shouldn't call them kids, really. They're, they're sick form, mostly, and above. Um, students that had left a long, long time ago. Um, and they were so, so upset to see it as well. But there were so many of them that turned out, and they actually all wore their school uniform. Um, nobody had said they had to, nobody said they should they just did um, because they were proud so uh, yeah it was a very very hard day um, and actually I came home <laughs> I came home and had some had some lunch and then I was sat in the chair and I was just nodding off and I was like I'm gonna go upstairs and I actually went upstairs to bed in my coat <laughs> my jeans I still had my scarf on and I just laid down on the bed and I just had a 20 minute nap now that's very unusual for me. Don't get me wrong. Before Ness came along, and and when I was living on my own, I love a nap. I love a nap. There's something amazing about it. But I just don't do it so much these days. And so for me to actually fall asleep for 20 minutes during the day um, was was quite quite unusual. So uh, yeah, I felt much better. And then we went for a walk in the woods after that. So um, so yeah, sad day, um, but sad day. Right, I have got a couple of messages to pass on to you um, very quickly. First of all, and I just had this in my hand because I did it the first time, um, a couple of questions from the tutorials. I'm so glad that you guys all seem to enjoy the tutorials and planning to make some stuff. This big ring here is called a book ring. These are the types of rings that are hinged and that open out. Now this one is a big one. I think it's a three inch one, maybe. Yeah, I think it's a three inch one but you can get all sorts of different sizes. I quite like the big ones for if I've got lots and lots of threads um, and I like the smaller ones sort of for individual projects. And then the other ring that I used, the one that goes on the top there, that's just a key ring um, fitting. So it's just one of those small key ring fittings there. You could use jump rings, um, but you'd have to just make sure you've got the right size jump ring for the, the cabochon base and then for it to fit on the um, on the on the ring as well. I quite like these because I like mine to just slide about regardless of the hinge so I just always go a little bit bigger. So that's my first um, bit of admin. Second bit of admin I was talking to Carla from Patchwork Rabbit a couple of days ago because I'm a member of their Picture This Plus Fabric of the Month Club and three or four months ago I managed to miss an email. I just completely didn't see it um, and then I didn't so I didn't end up paying my my invoice until like the first of the following month which was absolutely fine with Carla she didn't mind but I felt awful that I'd missed it so I sort of about sort of mid mid month so week two week three of the month I sort of now get on a bit of a high alert looking for my invoice coming through because I don't want to miss it and um, I 
hadn't got anything so I, I emailed her and I said have I missed this invoice again and she's like no no um, our order for fabric and our expo order is stuck in customs um, it's stuck in UK customs now she doesn't think it's going to be there very much longer but if you've been waiting on stuff from Patchwork Rabbit or you've been like I have constantly checking the website to see <laughs> when the Needlework Expo stuff's coming in um, then it shouldn't be too much longer so if you work in US, uh, US UK customs or you know somebody who does uh, have a word um, there is a, a sizable parcel there with Patchwork Rabbit's name on it and we need it it's, it's an urgent one um, if not, we'll just have to organise a mob and go and get it. That's all there is to it. So uh, that's up to you. You either release it quickly or we're coming to get it. Right, third little bit of um, info. So you might remember this. Sorry, I didn't iron it. I just grabbed it off my uh, two frame pile. Um, this is Mary Catherine Harris and it's by Ern Hiscock. Now, I've had a few emails from people and a few people have contacted me saying that they've messaged her but they haven't had any response back and I'd messaged her myself and didn't have a reply and then I saw she'd posted something on one of the Facebook groups from her Facebook so I thought oh I'll try her Facebook just to check everything's okay and you know see how she's doing and all and it turns out they've moved house into it sounds like a place that uh, needs some renovation. I think she said it's quite an old property that they're um, they're restoring. Um, so they're living on site. Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy, and so she's been trying to keep up with things, but she hasn't necessarily got to everyone who's wanted one of the charts. So I asked if she'd like some help. Um, so what we're going to do is I will put down below Erna's PayPal details. So all you need to do is to email. Um, Erna's PayPal, so that's wrong, let me get this right. You need to use Erna's PayPal details to send her £5, which is the cost of the chart. And then when you've sent her the £5, if you take a screenshot of your sort of PayPal confirmation that comes up and email it to me, I will email the chart out to you. Um, so all I need to see is that a confirmed PayPal receipt that you've paid the money to Erna, and then I will um, forward you the chart out and hopefully that'll just give her a bit of breathing space because obviously she's trying to run her own business as well um, as all of us want in this this lovely chart so um, I'll put the details below but yeah PayPal to Erna and then email me and I will send you the chart. Right I've got a few things to show you today I'm not sure it's going to be as long as it normally is mainly because uh, I've been a bit of an idiot but other than that, I'll get to that bit in a minute. So I've got a couple of FFOs to show you. I've got um, a new start. Uh, I've got a little bit of happy mail that I'm really excited about. And I'm just looking through my pile to check. And um, some haul. So I'm going to start off with my FFOs. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, then you will have seen these. The first thing that I FFO'd, excuse my <laughs> PDF copy, um, this is HF. 1916 sampler by Darling Whimsy Designs on Etsy. It's the same company that does all those really cool quirky Quakers as well so if you've seen anybody with those it's the same designer. And so this was a beautiful little stitch and I think I showed you last week that I had the um, the frame for it so all I've done is I've popped it into the frame. So I roughed up the sides a little bit because if you remember me telling you last week I actually managed to order the wrong frame the right size but the wrong frame um, and yeah I'm really really happy with the way it turned out I haven't done too bad getting it straight but this fabric it was 36 count Tobias by Seraphim this fabric has got more pins in it than I've ever used on a project it, need, it seemed to need a pin every like half centimetre or something all I do to finish mine is to pin them. I don't really do anything else. And if you would, if I was to take that back off, you would see lots of um, kind of free flowing fabric. My rule of thumb is that if I can get the back on, that's fine. I make it look nice from the front. And if I can get the back on, that's good. Because I'm always of the mind that I might want to do something else with it. I might want to reframe it in the future. And so I'd leave that extra fabric in the back. I don't trim it right down or um, do anything other than pin it. I probably should learn to lace, but um, yeah, I haven't got that yet. One day. 
So there's that one. As I said, this, what drew me to it was this little mistake here. And this girl's gone, nah, I'm not fixing that. And just budged it. Love that. So yeah, just framed, 36 count. Frame was by Scale Frames, which I told you about last, a couple of weeks ago now, I think. It did come with um, hanging mounts on as well. That's why that, that bit's a bit torn there, because I took the, the sticky off to get the hanging mounts off. But I'll probably just pop that up on a shelf somewhere. It's been sat over our fireplace um, all week, just so I can, I can look at it. And my second finish, was by Pinker and Pumpkin Blogspot. Yes, got it right. <laughs> got it right for the first time ever. Um, and it was this one, Erin Yu. And I'd stitched that one on 36 count Tobias as well, actually, because if you remember, I just picked one piece of fabric the week before last and just <laughs> did everything on it. And this was my, this is my little finish. And this is actually my ornament for the monthly Orny Sal. I'd done two Christmas ones, so I thought it was time to have something else. And so there's the front, there's the back. Um, so in order to make this, I cut two discs of cardboard, one for the front uh, fabric, one for the back fabric. And then I sewed sort of a running stitch around the fabric and then pulled it tight. and sewed across the back of the um, the fabric exactly like you would if you were making the top or bottom for a, a drum. Um, I use Vonna Pfeiffer's method for, for making my drums so if you want to see what I did to the top and the bottom of this or the back and the front of this have a look at the drum tutorial. And then what I've done in the past is actually glue these two together but this time I didn't. This time I actually sewed all the way around the edge and I'm really really pleased with how it came out. It came out much neater than gluing and I'm not worried that it's going to suddenly pop apart. I made a little hanging beaded thing, beaded hanger and then around the outside just put these. Now these are pins. <laughs> They're just pins, some nice little pearl headed pins that I had and so I've just slotted them in in between the two cardboard pieces. Now I haven't got to worry in my house about a small person coming along and taking those pins out. Um, she's not, it's not something she would she would do but if you have that concern then maybe put some glue in between before you um, before you sew up and then eventually when you poke the pins in the glue will harden and they won't come out then. But yeah, really, really pleased with that. Really pleased with that. And then I should have another finish to show you, but I haven't. I should have finished Florence May Piggin. Um, now, Florence May Piggin, excuse me, I have loved stitching her all week, hence why she is nearly finished. I have got about half a row of letters to do, half an alphabet to do on her. And I took her with me to school on Friday, thinking oh, I might get a little bit of stitching in at lunchtime, and I didn't, but I've left her on my desk. I've left the whole project bag on my desk for the Easter holidays. So Florence May Piggin is spending two weeks in school, which actually, looking at her alphabets, bearing in mind she did three alphabets, she's got two of them wrong. So I don't think it's gonna do <laughs> her any harm to spend a couple of weeks in school but I was so annoyed I was so annoyed I had to call into Tesco's on the way home and I suddenly looked down at the, my bag on the floor and I was like I've left it at school oh I've left it at school and I really did I was like I've left it at school and so yeah it's going to be sat there all through the Easter holidays before I get my hands back on back on her and I was absolutely loving her absolutely loving her so what did I do did I get out one of my other 45, six whips to work on? No, I didn't. Um, I was absolutely loving working with Sulky Thread on 36 count, and that's what um, Florence May Piggin was on. So, I had a little bit of haul, and I'll show you one of the pieces. It was this, Quaker Samplings 3, from 
um, let me get this right, with my needle, with my needle, um, Ellen Chester. And I bought this from eBay because I've always loved it. I, I, do you know what? I used not to be able to do a monochrome sampler. I'd start a monochrome sampler and then I'd be like, oh, a little bit blue there would look nice. And then a oh, little, little bit red. And, and then before I knew it, it wasn't a monochrome sampler anymore. <laughs> but having done, um, having done this red sampler, and because there's been so many red samplers in the, um, just on social media at the moment, there seems to be a lot of red samplers. And having worked on Florence May Piggin, and I've got um, seven red alphabets on order from, from Patchwork Rabbit. And then this. And so I was like, oh, I really want to start that. I really want to be stitching one over two with Sulky on 36 count. And so that's what I did. So I picked out one of my other sulky reds let me just clip that down and this is 1169 sulky 1169 so it's sort of a burgundy it's more of a brown than that it's showing quite red there but it's more of a it does have a little bit more brown to it but i love it and so this is where this is where i've got to and i've only had one one night on this so going to be a, a long piece I've got my fabric doubled over here now I did iron this but it shows you what my ironing skills are like there we go there we go so this is a piece of 36 count I think it's probably platinum but until I get my Florence May Piggin back which is on platinum I'm not 100% sure I don't think it's cream I think it's platinum and it's oh, blowing out a little bit there um so yeah i uh i'm loving stitching on this so i've got a long way to go i think when it when it's finished it ends up being like 22 inches long by six and a half inches wide or something but yeah i've been working on here i just wanted to check it would fit on my piece of fabric um i'll probably end up framing it myself so i'm not too worried about it being a little bit tight and then I've just sort of started on this motif here so I've sort of done done this corner here so yeah I only started that just because I was so despondent <laughs> at leaving Florence at school I could have worked on loads of other things I could have done some whip go stuff because I have been rubbish at whip go the intention's still there the intention is still there I'm not I'm not dropping it but I just haven't I just haven't got to it um right freebie let's do a freebie then i'll show you my happy mail my happiest of happy mail and then got a little bit of haul and then that's me done i don't even think i'm going to talk about plans next week because quite frankly who knows um now a lady messaged me and i'm going to have to put her name across the bottom um and said did i know about the website um the geary's website for blackbird designs and i did i i consult that site so much about um, blackbird charts and, and what's in print what's not in print what patterns are in certain books and things like that and also I've used their freebies there before and I was thinking about it today and I was thinking oh, I've had a lot of people who've com um, commented that they're quite new to stitching or quite new to samplers so I thought even if it's even though it's something that I've used for quite a long time I thought I would show you um, a blackbird freebie from there because you might not be familiar with it or you might have forgotten about it or um, it's got I mean even if you just wanted to take the alphabets sorry slippage even if you wanted to take the alphabets off it and use it for something else um, then you could so the freebie today is called her sampler 1796 and I'll put as always the um, the link below so this is a freebie chart and it's basically one, two, three alphabets. So the top one would be cross stitch. This one is going to be a four sided stitch. And this one is um, the eyelet stitch. Um, so if you didn't want to do eyelet stitches, you could do some inner crosses. And then you've just got a little um, numerical row there. And then space to, a tiny bit of satin, satin stitch and space to write your own um, your own name there. There's a little bit of over one at the bottom but you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. You could just put your name 
in um, in full cross in the bottom. So that means you could easily do it on um, on Ada. The um, eyelet stitch is done with 16 threads, but you could do it with eight and do it with um, with Ada, no problem. Well, you could split the you could split the um, split the weave. It'd be fine. Or you could just do um, four crosses and do it that way. So there's that one. There is some suggested threads on the back, um, but again, you could just pick out any nice kind of palette that you wanted to do and do it on that. You could do it monochrome, you could do it, you could do it however you liked. So yeah, that was the one I thought I would bring back to your attention or maybe bring to your attention first. Happy mail. Now, I have been treated again by um, Paola from Pantini Pantini and she messaged me a while back um, just after Expo and she said that she was going to send me um, her Expo designs um, and they came, they came the other day so as you can imagine I was super super happy with them so let me show you what she sent me. So she sent me the next three in the monthly series. So when I think of April, and that one has a little tiny duck button. When I think of May, sorry, a bit glary. And that one has a little bee skip button. And no prizes for guessing when I think of June and that one has a little ice cream cone and she also sent me the pins to go with them so these two are April May and June and then she very kindly sent me the pins from January, February and March as well. So I've got all the pins to go with those. And she also sent me, because she knows that um, I do like to pass on the charts, she also sent me some spare buttons for the charts so that when I've stitched them, dropped it, when I've stitched them, then I can pass them along with a fresh button. How nice is that? Um, so she sent me Home Sweet Home. Now I'm not sure she realised that she sent me two of those. So that will definitely be a giveaway pretty soon. And she sent me Quiet Place. Which is a beautiful tree. There's a little bit in the shade there but there's a sheep sat under the bottom. So there's the little sheep button. She sent me as well cat lovers which has actually got two buttons and a pin and she sent me dog lovers which again has got two buttons and a pin so I was absolutely gobsmacked and thank you so much Paula I have got so much to stitch now it's it's great um if you remember i finished in terms of the months Ooh. stay stay um in terms of the months i finished january but i haven't put the button on yet because i'm still waiting for my my finishing thing Ooh. do you know what one of the things i need to do this holiday is to tidy this room up there is not a clear space in here. So I finished January and I am working on March and I haven't done any more on it but I may well take this downstairs with me now and finish this one. So there's March. So that was my happy mail and then all wise uh, I had a little bit so I had the Quaker number three that I showed you to begin with. And then 
I had a couple of other charts, ones that I hadn't seen. This first one I had seen and I just picked it up because I've always liked it. Um, Brenda Gervais, Mice in the Sewing Room. So that one came from like a stash unload, a, a UK stash unload, I think. So there's that one. And then these ones came from eBay. Um, as I said, they're ones I, I hadn't seen. The first one is Martha Hallett from the um, Sampler. I've said that right. I'll take this one out. Because I think you might struggle to see this one otherwise. Um, so there. I just loved that one. With that border and those two big birds either side um, very simple in the middle just a um, an alphabet or two alphabets it says Martha Hallett her work 1832 and the one thing that I really liked about this so finished size 22 and a half by 22 and a half inches right 30 count recommended for beginners <laughs> recommended for beginners Oh my goodness me. I have to say when I was first stitching that is not something that I would have picked out straight away. But it is, um, I'm sure it's all full cross and all over too. So um, so nothing difficult in there but I just like the thought that maybe when I was first starting that was something that I would have picked. <laughs> and two other things. Now I had never ever seen this before. It's called Ladies Maids by Plum Street Samplers. And I had never seen that before. And there are 50, did I read that right somewhere? 50 Ladies Maids on there, I'm sure of it. And then that beautiful big house in the middle. Now this is not small. This is 350 by 195. All charted in Weeks Dye Works or DMC. But yeah, this has got so many pages to the pattern. I'm just trying to see where it said. I'm sure it was 50. And then the other thing that I bought, and I've wanted one of these for quite a while. Ladies, you'll understand. I've wanted one of these for quite a while. And then when the chart came, all squillions of pages of it 30 odd pages of it I was like oh, maybe I've bitten off more I, more than I can chew but Quaker balls so this is a chart by Amaryllis Artworks Quaker balls so there's three different sized balls that you can make and you get all of the patterns obviously and then you get how to lay it all out and really, really comprehensive instructions about how to um, put it all together, um, all the different charts that are in there, um, which charts you need to make which size ball, um, suitable fabrics, all of that. So that is going to be a real sort of good bedtime read one night <laughs> to try and decipher exactly what it is I need and what it is I've got to do. But if you look on the back it shows you pictures of it as a half ball and then you put it together and I think judging by the same colourings that's the middle sized one but that is going to be that is going to be an epic make so I'm going to have to have to have a good read and get prepared for that but other than that that is me done for this week and I'm going to go and sleep um, I think my body is calling out for sleep. I think it's ready for a proper rest and I will see you next week. Stay classy, Stitches.